It's my pleasure to be able to introduce our next speaker, uh, John McHugh. And uh, this is going to be like an AA meeting. Uh, I'm a recovering command and control uh, leader. Everybody say, hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody say, hi, John. Hi, John. So John is our third speaker. And before, I, I hadn't met John before this morning, so I came early. And I asked John, I said, is there anything I should highlight about your introduction? And he said, and I quote, nah, people don't listen to that stuff anyhow. <laughs> so we already know that John's got humility down pat. But like it or not, John, I'm going to give him your background. John McHugh is the Director of Corporate Communications and Leadership Development and Training for Quick Trip uh, out of La Crosse, Wisconsin. He helped the company achieve recognition as top workplace, as listed by the Milwaukee Journal, the Minneapolis Star Tribune, and the Des Moines Register. Prior to joining Quick Trip in 2004, John was an instructor and principal at Aquinas High School in La Crosse. He holds degrees, multiple degrees, from uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Georgian University in Rome, Italy. Interesting. He sits on several boards, including the Friends of Wisconsin Public Television, Trust Point, the National Mutual Benefit Society, Marywood Franciscan Spiritual, uh, Spirituality Center, and the Mayo Clinic, so he gives back. He and his wife Maggie enjoy living in their log home near Sparta, Wisconsin. And finally, when I asked John, uh, after just meeting him this morning, what one thing would you say summarizes the key to servant leadership, his answer after only about two seconds was compassion. Please give a warm welcome to John. Some time ago we had a letter we received at the corporate office of the cross from one of our guests. We don't call them customers, we call them guests internally. It was a five page letter and you could tell by the handwriting that it was an elderly gentleman. In the first paragraph he said, I love your quick trip store in Anago, Wisconsin. It's where I live. I love the Nofi ATM, I love the price of the bananas, Coworkers are always friendly. Um, and then he went off for four and a half pages on religion, on politics, uh, conspiracy theories, and the last line of the letter was, and I have other things to say to you, call me to this phone number. <laughs> so our CEO always reads the letters first, and he came to my office, he said, John, can you do me a favor, can you call this guy back? Well, I waited till I had a full hour on my calendar, because I could tell by the tone of the letter, once I get this guy on the phone, this is not going to be a short conversation. So I called him up, I said, sir, my name is John McHugh, I'm the Director of Corporate Communications at Quick Trip. I want to thank you for the very nice letter, uh, the compliments, and I understand you have some more things you'd like to say. And he goes off for 47 minutes, now, and I know this because I have the timer on my phone. And then when he was done, I said, well, sir, anything else? Oh yeah, one more thing. I was in your store right before Christmas, two days before Christmas. I bought a banana and a pint of milk. And when I paid for it, the young lady at the register said, stop back again. I like that. <laughs> so, so I'm glad you like that. We actually call it the return comment at Quick Trip, and those of you who shop our stores might be familiar with that. We, we actually train for that, and we evaluate for that, and we expect our coworkers to use it on a regular basis. He said, no, you're not listening to me. She meant it. I said, oh, I, I hope she meant it. I don't want any of our coworkers to say like robots. And he got even angrier with me. He said, you aren't listening to me. She said I was always welcome in that store. And I could tell him he's getting emotional. So I said, sir, is there more to the story? Yeah. So I was with my family. Um, we celebrate Christmas a few days before. It's easier to get the kids and grandkids together. And sometimes when I'm with my family, I have a tendency to go off on religion and politics. And <laughs> probably do. He said, so at the end of the evening when I was leaving, my daughter came up to me and said, Dad, when you come here for the holidays and you go off on all your tangents, it's not fun to have you with us. So he said, I left my family knowing I wasn't always welcome. I walked in your store and all I did was buy one banana and a pint of milk. And that young lady told me I was always welcome there. He said, it's good to know that there's some places where you can go where you're always welcome at Christmas. Click. I shared that story with all of our coworkers. Uh, we meet with all of our coworkers for the first two weeks of December, all 18,000 coworkers in our three states with our 550 stores. And I shared that story with them because we believe in a servant-led culture, you have to tell the stories of goodness. 
You have to tell the stories of goodness and you have to celebrate the stories of goodness because we tell them on their first day in the job, if they think the most important part of their job is selling gasoline and hot dogs, they've already flunked the Quick Trip School of Business. We believe something that, that Jim Collins writes. Those of you who are familiar with Jim Collins, built to last good to great. Now the training department at Quick hates me when I do this because it's too many words on a slide, I get that. But this quote is too good to pass up and I'll tell you why. Here's what he says. For in the end, it's impossible to have a great life unless it's a meaningful life. It's very difficult to have meaningful life without meaningful work. Perhaps then you might gain that rare tranquility that comes from hand, hand in, knowing that you've created something intrinsic excellent that makes a contribution. Indeed, you might even gain that deepest of all satisfactions, knowing that your short time here on this earth has been well spent and that it mattered. It's having a sense of purpose at work. And Jim Collins points out that if you have a culture where that purpose is celebrated and the purpose is deeper than making a buck, those companies are 16 times more profitable than the stock market average. You say, is there an ROI on servant-led cultures? <laughs> 16 times, folks. It's a no-brainer. So what we do at Quick Trip for our first day, we remind them that the most important part of their job is not selling gasoline and hot dogs. It's our mission statement, real similar to Southwest, to serve our customers and community more effectively than anyone else. By treating our customers, coworkers, and suppliers as we personally would like to be treated to make a difference in someone's life. We begin every single meeting at every level in the company with this statement. In the old days when we first started Beth in 2004, we'd have to read it off the page, and now everybody just recites it, and it sounds like you should say amen when you're done. <laughs> we do it at every single level in the company, at every single meeting, because we remind ourselves that the most important part of our work is not selling stuff or making money. The most important thing we do is this. Well, the catch is, how do you find people that fit this? We can't train people to be nice. Um, if you're bad to the bone, there's not a darn thing I can do in a training program that's going to fix that. I can say that because I oversee our training program at Quick Trip. We don't have a great training program at Quick Trip. I can say that because I help with it. Um, <laughs> it's not about the training, it's about the hiring. And so for us at Quick Trip, here are the first three questions we ask in the interview process. And it's asked of every single coworker, whether that's the person who's making the donut back in La Crosse, the person delivering the donut on the truck, the person selling the donut. First three questions. Number one, tell me about the last random act of kindness you did for someone. Number two, how have you made a difference in someone's life this last month? And thirdly, how have you treated others as you would like to be treated? And if you can't answer those first three questions, we don't go any further in the interview process. Because what we want is people that naturally are good servant leaders. They're already trained by that by their parents or their teachers by the time we get them at the age of 18. We can't teach that. We have to find people that fit that culture. Well, then what we do is we celebrate the stories. Um, if you do something great at Quick Trip and we have one of our guests that write into the corporate office, uh, we publish those letters uh, every week, every Wednesday. All of our stores receive a newsletter. And the central section of that is something called making a difference. And those are the letters that are printed. Now back in 2004, when I first started at Quick Trip, that year we received 14 unsolicited guest compliment letters. And so I said to Don, our CEO, I said, Don, what do you do with the letters? Well, I read them and they go in a file. Well, what else happens to them? Well, I don't know if they stay in the file. So how about if we publish them every Wednesday, uh, and then if we know who the coworker is, we'll send them a gift card. It's valued at about $80 to $100. Thank them for living the mission statement. And then, um, if it's a really good story, I'll use that in training or I'll use that in public relations. Well, here's what happened. We just concluded our fiscal year 2016. This year we received unsolicited 1,428 guest compliment letters. How do you go from 14 to 1,400 in 12 years? You just celebrate goodness. Because when goodness is celebrated, even in the companies, it creates more goodness. It creates a whole snowball experience because when we say this is a good thing to do and then you get put in the situation, you'll do that act of kindness that you heard about, that you read about. Is that goodness, when it's celebrated, it creates more goodness. And there's sometimes on Wednesdays, if you walk into our stores and you look at our coworkers and they look a little teary-eyed, it's probably because they were reading the letters. And sometimes there's not a dry eye in the house. Now, let me conclude with one of my favorites. Um, this was a couple years ago, um, but it fits our, our culture very well. I'm a regular customer at your Sheboygan store. In the past, my family has caused the store a lot of problems because my son constantly steals from them. 
That's not a good thing in our industry, in case you're wondering. Um, your staff has always treated me with compassion, even though my child has done this. And a side note, my family and I do not have much. My son went to the store on Saturday in February. He had no socks on because we just don't have money right now for new ones. It was snowing pretty badly, and one of your staff members was outside shoveling. My son was sitting on the curb cleaning the snow out of his shoes. Your staff member, Matt, came up to my son and asked if he was okay. He helped my son clean the snow out of his shoes and then gave my son his own socks off his feet. It gives a whole new meaning to giving someone the shirt off your back. Your staff continues to show compassion and respect to me, even after my child's mistakes that cost them time and money. Thank you for hiring caring people. Well, I, I got the letter, I, I was so moved by it, I, I contacted Jessica, our store leader, uh, by email. I said, hey Jess, I got this really great story, is this true? And this is what Jess emailed back. John, I was working when this happened. The coworker came back to me after he did this and he sat down in my office and he cried because he felt so badly for the kid. I was very proud of my coworker. His name is Matt. He'll be with our company a year this May. He's 18 years old and still in high school. It's Tom said kids these days, huh? When I contacted Matt, I said, Matt, why did you do it? He said, well, John, you told me the first day in the job that the most important thing I was supposed to do is not sell gasoline and hot dogs. You told me that I was supposed to treat others as you'd like to be treated. And if I didn't have socks and somebody else did, I'd hope they share with me. I was just trying to do what we're supposed to do here at the Quick Trip. We have 18,000 coworkers every day who are trying to live by that mission uh, of taking care of other people, uh, of being servants for others. It's not about selling things. It's not about making a profit. But if you put that mission before the margin, the margins come, which we share with all of our coworkers. That's what happens when you have a servant-led culture that's built on purpose and mission, and you have 18,000 good people. Thanks for your time and attention. Thanks,